Hello, this is Dennis Tafe, and for the last three or four years, I've been writing a monthly instructional column for a magazine um, called Musicians Hotline Magazine, uh, which is in print as well as online. Uh, and how this came about is one day I was uh, going to my mailbox, and sure enough, there was a free complimentary copy of Musicians Hotline magazine. I thought, wow, this is great, a free magazine. And so I took it inside and started flipping through it, and there were a lot of ads um, and some columns as well, which I found very interesting. Overall, I thought, wow, this is a really cool magazine. And at the time, you have to understand that I was very much into learning um, and learning to play and tr trying to find sources to learn to play. And it occurred to me that, gosh, you know, after flipping through this magazine, you know, the one thing that's missing from it, you know, for it to be a, a, a guitar magazine, is a, an instructional column. Um, so, I mean, there wasn't a lot of thought <laughs> behind it, really. You know, I wasn't, uh, you know, totally prepared to do it myself, in fact. Um, so, I thought on a whim, there, uh, there I saw the publisher, Trent Salter. Um, looked pretty cool. He was holding a guitar, you know, his publisher statement. And I read it, and he seemed very enthusiastic about guitars and music in general, which I thought was great. Um, and there was a phone number there um, to reach him, <laughs> you know. And not only that, I think it, from what I recall, it was an 800 number. So I thought, wow, well, why not? So I just called him up. And <laughs> I called him up, and someone answered and said, hello. I said, uh, yes, do you think I can speak to Trent Salter? And the voice on the other end, um, you got him. Um, and sure enough, um, right there I was speaking to Trent Salter, who's a publisher of Musicians Hotline Magazine. And so I pitched my idea to him. And I said, gosh, you know, um, this is a... Um, cool magazine, but really what it needs, you know, is an instructional column. Um, there, there aren't any in, in the magazine. Uh, I told him a little bit about myself, you know, albums I released, and things I've done, just over the phone. And he was really, really for it, you know, and, and it wasn't very hard to pitch at all. Um, he was really accepting of the idea. Um, what I recall. Uh, I think he said, you know, give me a couple days to think about it, um, though he seemed that he was interested in doing it. And a couple days later, from what I recall, um, he let me know that, sure, go ahead. And so there it was. Um, you know, I was basically going to write a monthly instructional guitar column. For Musicians Hotline Magazine. <laughs> Back then, uh, little did I know what it would lead to. Um, you know, it, it's really become, um, I wouldn't say a full-time job, but a constant thing. Because the second you get one column done, you know, they need um, to get another one in. So I'm always a month ahead of time. And I remember that uh, when it actually came out and I got my first issue, how thrilled I was, you know. This was a really big deal for me, um, especially back then, you know, I, I was really trying to get exposure and being ignored by um, a few other guitar magazines, really, um, and I certainly think that I, I could write an instructional column. Um, so, 
I went ahead and continued, and so month by month, you know, I would basically write the column and put it out. Um, and then for a while, um, basically we were adding audio examples for every one of the examples. Um, and this went on for a few months. However, I, I must say that um, example six. Th this became a big chore, really, you know, getting the files and, and sending it to them. I, I hope to that we can do that again. Um, at the time, though, it was so, so busy that it was very difficult to get that done. So eventually that was dropped and the column continued. Um, now I have to say there were um, se several mishaps, if you like, that that almost ended uh, the practice of column <laughs> for Musicians Hotline. And I tell you, um, thank goodness that Trent Salter you know, was very understanding and um, was really dedicated um, to, to having the column continue. Um, one of those is, I mean, unfortunately, that Musicians Hotline magazine um, hosts a guitar show called the Dallas Guitar Show. And I remember in 2003, I thought surely that I was going to go. Um, so I told them, you know, I'm ready to go. I'll be there. Uh, I was making plans for it and everything. And unfortunately, some things came up, and it ends up that in the end I couldn't go. Um, and I thought surely, oh well, that's the end of the column. You know, they won't want me to write the column. Again, you know, because basically I'd missed the show completely, and I, I was devastated. I really was. Um, then I got a call, and it was Musicians Hotline. Sure enough, and they were asking, well, you know, what, what happened? What's going on? Um, so I explained to them the situation, and I thought, well, you probably don't want me to write the column anymore, you know, thinking that it was over. Um, and they said, no, no, that's fine. Um, you can continue to keep writing the column, and I did, uh, which is really great. And I've seen the, the the magazine start, you know, from a pretty not small magazine, but certainly not what it is today, which is really a full fledged, you know, music magazine. And to me, it's certainly a guitar magazine. Um, I actually prefer it to some of the larger magazines. As far as reading the columns, I think all the columnists are really, really talented. And Trent Sullivan has certainly done a fantastic job in his staff as well. Um, and I tell you, the column itself um, has been fantastic for me. Uh, especially on months where uh, I was really struggling and uh, didn't really have much going on musically. Especially early on, uh, you know, around 2003, especially maybe early 2004, you know. Uh, and this always kept me going, writing this column, writing this column, writing this column, you know, on and on and on. Um, I also discovered that for a long time, uh, it was very difficult, you know, to come up with material. Uh, in fact, it's still difficult to this day, however... Um, I, I look forward to it, you know, it's not a, a job at all. And I find that the material is very interesting, and every time that I write a column, um, I learn from the material itself. In other words, as I'm writing it, I'm learning as well. Um, and it's really been very, very helpful. To me, uh, I've gotten some really good comments about it. In fact, I remember I ran into a person in Bloomington, uh, Indiana, my hometown, where I am, and they they said, "Hey, don't you write that column in that music magazine?" I said, "Yeah, Musicians Hotline." He says, "Yeah, I use that all the time to learn uh, music theory," and I was really pleased, you know, that um, people do read the magazine and see it, certainly. Uh, it's great exposure for me, um, but also I'm thrilled to see how Musicians Hotline 
magazine has grown. Also, they would print the column online, which was really great, I thought. It was really nice of them to do, and kept an archive of the lessons, you know. Um, and I tell you, month after month after month of writing the column, you know, it becomes harder to come up with interesting material. And what I found is rather than forcing myself, you know, to find a specific topic or that kind of thing, I decided, well, look, I'm still working on things and trying to learn them, so why not, you know, do the column on whatever it is I'm working on at the present moment, and I'm sure if it's going to help me, then it'll help other players as well. And that seems to have gone very, very well for me because as I'm writing and I'm also learning and I think others are as well. <laughs>